Hello, good morning, and welcome. This is Colin and Curtis in the morning. We're one day late, but that doesn't make this show any less great. This show don't Colin, stop. This show doesn't stop for anything. Yeah. Colin, how are you doing? Uh, How's your weekend? Doing great. Just watching some college basketball. My, there you te- go. my teams are losing. Oh, well, that's not that's uh, not great. It's just another Saturday, I guess. But you know, just another Saturday. Yep. Or Sunday or Monday, whenever you're listening to this, Colin. Let's just go ahead and get into the news. Mm-hmm. Um, so starting off, we got Party Hard. It's coming to PS4 this spring. You know, I believe I want to say Brad actually told like talked to us about this game. Yeah, I was on. Do you uh, remember this? Yeah, it's like uh, a, <laughs> so you're like at a party. And so, you're, like, killing people, but you're, well, like, the cops show up and you're trying to hide. It seems very Hotline Miami-ish, so I was reading the description of Party Hard. So, you know, like, I'm sure we've all experienced this. The neighbors throwing a crazy rockin' party. They're way, they're super, super loud. And you're just trying to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, everything just, you just can't take it anymore. And so you go next doors and you, and you know, you start killing people. I'm sure we've all been through yeah, that, we've, right? Yeah, we've all been there, yeah. So that is a, I guess that's a premise. And from what, uh, the video that I remember Brad showing us, it definitely looked Hotline Miami-ish. And that same kind of vein, that kind of, that kind of game. Where you're running through, just taking people out. Although it looks like this maybe has more, whereas like Hotline Miami is like just really quick, like run in and get out, right? Uh, this seems more like almost strategic. Like they were mentioning, like poisoning the punch bowl, um, and things like that. And then also, you when you live stream this game, the Twitch chat can get involved. And I thought this part was funny. You mentioned the cops coming in. Yeah. Um. So I guess on the live stream they can they can swat you. But not like real life swatting, which is a thing. <laughs> on twitch but yeah. actually you can like you can enter a command that will send in like the swat team into your game mm-hmm. i like i like games that do those kind of things yeah uh, i really i really appreciate that and like i always you know like you always try to be like oh you know we'll vote to you know not like whatever it's like dead nation. Right. i remember that one time you you were streaming dead nation on yep. ps4 and it's and like, it's do like you want to send more zombies or yeah and you're like and it's like no we're sending zombies yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah we're sending yep. more zombies yeah. So that's good. Uh, that's coming this spring. Uh, so Knights and Bikes. I think this is probably the the thing I'm most excited about from all this news this week. Uh, so this is a Kickstarter campaign. It's got 19 days left. It is from some people who worked on Tearaway and Little Big Planet uh, specifically, and I think Ratchet and Clank also. Yeah. Uh, and so this is... Uh, I'm just going to like read part of this description here. Uh, Knights and Bikes takes place on... Penferzi Island, off the coast of Cornwall, a place of medieval legend and modern ter- terrorism. Our, st- our story starts in 1987 when the island is under threat from a number of forces, ancient and modern, which can only be tackled by the island's most overlooked heroes, its children. Uh, this is a game that's inspired by the Goonies and Earthbound, uh, which is what they're saying. It seems very, um, very much the kind of, like, childhood imagination like going on a grand adventure while also like kind of being grounded in reality in a weird way yeah it, it felt like like a costume quest almost kind yeah of that's like, that's like, yeah. With, like kids like using their imagination and stuff like that mm-hmm. I, I, I enjoyed that yep uh so that looks really cool and again it's on kickstarter there's about 19 days left uh go check it out i think it's looking like it's probably going to hit its goal i would i would i would bet um it's got some good publicity recently so uh, Knights and Bikes coming to PS4 some at some point mm-hmm. at some point in the future, and then finally, uh, Sheltered is also was announced for PS4. I believe that's coming sometime this year. Uh, this is interting because basically it's a well, it's a post-apocalyptic game, so that's not like too new. But the way they pitched it is that you start the game with a family and pet that you can completely customize. Okay. So every time you, you start with like a husband, a wife, I think a kid, and then a dog, I think is what they said. Although I imagine you could probably customize and, and change up a little bit of that. And your goal is to kind of deal with the types of things you would deal with in a post like a post apocalyptic situation. So like if your kid is hungry but you don't have food, how do you deal with that? And I guess the game keeps going. Even if a family member dies, it continues going, and it's the only game over when everyone de- is dead. 
Hmm. So it's a very happy and cheery game, Colin. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> Pretty, but pretty I, I depressing. Don't know. Yeah, like it's it's kind of a bummer to, to say it out loud, but is, is I don't there, know, it sounds kind of interesting. Is there an end to it, or do you just kind of like know. just go and then, like you just go until everybody dies? I wonder. I don't know. I think they mentioned some connections to like a rogue, like roguelike elements. Okay. So I'm wondering if maybe it's a thing of like seeing just how long you can last. There, I would imagine there might be an ending or of some sort. Mm-hmm. Um. But I I do I I think it's interesting because a lot of your survival post apocalyptic games, it's about you. It's like you are trying to survive as one person, and maybe you team up with some other people to help out. But mo- mostly it's about having the resources to keep yourself alive. Mm-hmm. And so I think this is interesting because it's an entire family, and so there's a bit more at stake, which I think is cool. So that's kind of our our big three news stories. Um. We're just going to rapid fire through the rest of these. Uh, Blastom Bunnies, which has previously been announced. It's coming to PS4 and Vita on March 8th. Uh, Dungeons 2 is coming to PS4 on April 26th. Uh, Inversus got announced for PS4. That's coming this spring. It's like an arcade, like, looks like maybe co-op shooter. It's all, like, black and white. It looks kind of interesting. Um, and then finally, uh, Campo Santo. Uh, so Firewatch, you reviewed this past week. Yep. And we've noted that there are some, some pretty big PS4 performance issues, a lot of stuttering. Mm-hmm. So Campo Santo kind of came out this week and said, yeah, we're, we're working on it. They apologized about it. So um, until that patch comes out, I think both of us would probably say if you have a choice, PC version would probably be the way to go. Yeah, definitely. I'd say so. Okay. Um, it's not, I mean, the 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 ps4 version it's just more like annoying and like immersion breaking more than anything yeah. um but yeah I, I would definitely say try it on a pc if you have the option yeah so that's a that's our big news this week <clears throat> colin we're just gonna head on over to the rumor mill the rumor central yeah i take a we, t- we take a trip over there every once in a take while take a detour to uh rumor lane uh yes two very interesting rumors coming out uh first off uh, we're gonna we're gonna take so we're going to the rumor mill, uh, but we're gonna take the exit sign that says uh, PlayStation Middle East uh, Twitter account. We're gonna take the, we're gonna veer off to that one. Okay. Uh, so we exit we exit off there, and just randomly on February sixth, we get a tweet from the PlayStation Middle East Twitter account with a like a wanted photo of Crash Bandicoot in his mm-hmm. jorts. And translated, it says, more people want it, or most wanted person, where mm-hmm. are you, Crash? So is this just another just big troll by Sony? Or is there something actually happening here? <laughs> is it? I, I, think, I think this is all... I, I, I don't think... Everything. This, this, everything sound, this back, sounded like a. It sounded like a, the end of like a fact or fiction show. Ev- everything. On TV. <laughs> everything from the sign at like the PlayStation commercial with like the yep. crash pointing to with PlayStation the arrow pointing logo. To, yep. to Sean Layden's shirt at PSX. To mm-hmm. this thing. Colin, it's all I, adding up. I don't believe any of it. It's I think all adding just, up. They're trolling everything about this. I don't. I don't think Crash. Uh, no, sorry. Just no. So and th- it's funny. I everything adds up. Everything adds up to Crash. We're all we're all heading for a big crash. Or wait. Anyway, so uh, here's like my personally. I think the Sean Layden thing was the big, the big clue. Mm-hmm. Of those three things, I think that's the one. Um. To me, I like and on and even like the, that early commercial with the crash, the arrow, and then the Sony logo. Yeah, that that actually is like. Typically, you'd look at that and you'd read what people were saying about it, and you're like, "That's kind of reaching." But honestly, though, like it felt that felt very spelled out. Also, with like whether or not that was something that was in the works or not, yeah. it very much felt like, "Wait, why?" That's such a what a weird thing to put in there if there wasn't something going on. But I think, I to me, I think Sean Layden's T-shirt, to me, was the thing that was the moment that I that I actually start started believing it myself, 
Because up until that point, I was like you, where I was like, no, of course not. It's not going to happen. Yeah. But th- now this Twitter account, I don't, I mean, I don't know. That it seems like a weird thing. And it certainly translates to an interesting quote there. But maybe, maybe. Maybe Crash I still is believe in jail. It's, I still believe it's happening, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's absolutely happening. I don't know that this points to it, but I do think it's happening. But uh, let's, uh, before we finish up on Crash, there is another rumor that Our... is, like, loosely associated in a weird way. Oh, oh man. Our, Colin, our favorite let's, uh, character. Let's, let's, let's take the next closest exit to LinkedIn.com. Yes. I believe is where this came from. Mm-hmm. Where uh, someone on their uh, resume listed a game, a little game, maybe you've heard of it, called Knack 2. Is this, this going to have like a like a subtitle to it also? Like Knack, Knack. 2, Return of the Puzzle, I don't know. R- return, return of an actual platformer. Oh... So Knack 2, uh, this person apparently in 2015, as of like May 2015, had been working on uh, animation for Knack 2. They've also had Final Fantasy 15 listed there, because I think it's like an outsourced like animation company. Oh, sure. XPEC or something, I believe. I believe that's it. So this naturally was caught by, by um, I think, NeoGAF and some other websites earlier, like actually earlier today. Um, this was not on our show notes until about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> But, uh, it, it, you know, people, it caught traction. Of course, it's been removed from this resume since then, obviously. But this seems, this seems very likely to me. No way. No way? No way. I think it gets announced at E3 this year. <sighs> Bets. Like, like, out of all the projects, like, they could work yeah. on, like, new things. I don't know, make, like, a, a Soul Sacrifice PS4 I, I don't know, like a Freedom Wars PS4, like out of Sony <laughs> Japan. Like, people want Knack 2. Oh, I want Knack 2. Oh, man. I... N- nothing interests me about, about Knack, really. It's, I, like, the, it's think... like that perfect rental game that you just play for, like, a Knack, couple of days. See, here, because here's the thing. Like, Knack is a good game. It's not great. I'm not going to say it's great. It's not bad, though. Yeah, I, I won't. I won't. I won't, it's, I won't it's, say a, it's, it's a it's a good game. The one thing I was a little weirded out about Knack was his voice. His voice kind of weirded me out a little bit. But mm-hmm. other than that, uh, Knack, the original Knack, for all of the weird like hate that it got, I felt like it never stood a chance. <laughs> but it, I thought it was a, it was a good game. It had some pretty cool ideals there. Uh, it was too long. It was way too long. And I think the level design probably could have used some work. But I think. At its core, it was a it was a cool game, and they had they had some interesting mechanics with like shrinking down and then growing to be like the size of a skyscraper. Mm-hmm. Uh, that stuff was really cool. So Knack Two has so much potential. Imagine like maybe instead of being the size of a skyscraper, you can be like the size of a planet, and you would just grab the moon and throw it at an enemy. I thought this was gonna be like a Katamari thing or something. That'd be great. Knack <laughs> two, look for it. So you're you're staunchly in the uh, no, this is not happening camp. I don't think it's happening. If it does happen, there better be another match three puzzle game I can play on my phone to get items that don't really matter. For those who remember that match three puzzle game that came with Knack, um, I just I just don't see the I. If there was somebody. To do it, it would be Sony to be like, yeah, let's do it again. But I just, it's just like, <laughs> why? Like, why? Because it was a game. And they can make it even better this time. The people are want, the people want Knack, Colin. I don't Every, know. I think, I think what it is, is the execs at Sony, they see the comment section on the Plus posts every month. And they see everyone clamoring for Knack on PlayStation Plus. So they figure... Well, let's make Knack 2. Because everyone wants Knack so much, that so when we put out Knack on PlayStation Plus, we'll give them Knack 2. Why? Why? So, okay, let's make a bet. Uh-oh. If Knack gets announced at E3 this year, 
you knack two i should say Mm -hmm. you have to review knack two when it comes out oh my goodness okay and if it doesn't and if it doesn't okay um i have to i have to review rainbow skies i was gonna go something something worse than that oh oh worse uh you know what? Let's go with that. Well, you know, you said you're, you know, you're the JRPG guy on site. You're gonna be reviewing that game anyways. No, no, I don't mm? think so. Really? <laughs> no. Uh, I would say you'd be reviewing that game. Who mm. else? Who else is gonna review a JRPG? I mean, don't do like a video for it. Okay. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything. Ah, oh, man, you uh caught me off guard with that one. Well, hey, it's because Knack Two is getting announced at E three this year. Yeah, you you uh watch for it. Yeah, you you need to you need to review Rainbow Skies. Not not just not just a video. You got to do. Mm-hmm. You got to go all in. I, w- I want tips and tricks <laughs> videos. I don't know. <laughs> well, anyways, so those are our rumors. Let us know what you think. Is Crash happening? Will Knack Two be a thing that exists? Maybe they team up together. In Knack Two. Knack 2, Crash Returns, Crash's Revenge. Knack, Knack, Knack to Crash. Crash and Knack. Knack and Crash. Hey, Colin, um, so this week Firewatch came out, like we mentioned earlier, you reviewed that game. Yep. Uh, we've both played through it, and both of, we both shared pretty similar feelings on it. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, one of the things that we we talked and we talked at length about this when I finished it, you and I basically tore apart the story on Skype. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but one of the things that we were really dis- I mean, I I think you might even like it more than me because there was I mean, there's a lot of elements of the story that I like, but there's a lot of things beyond just the ending that I don't really like that much. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have a I thought we'd throw this question in here that we could kind of briefly discuss. Is um, because we were both kind of disappointed in the ending of Firewatch. Yeah. And obviously, Firewatch is a game that is very much all about its story. Its story is like one of the, the most important things of that about that game. Yeah. And if you don't like the story, that's going to, pretty much decide whether or not you like Firewatch or not. Mm-hmm. Um. So we have this question in here. Uh, how much credit do you put into endings? Does a bad ending ruin the game for you, or is it quote all about the journey? I, a lot of times, like looking back, I I say sometimes a bad ending does ruin a game. Uh, no matter how, how good like the entire experience is, like if it's just kind of like a whatever ending, mm-hmm. um, like uh, you know we won't get into spoilers, uh, of course, but we talk about oh, I've talked about I think before maybe on the show, uh, like the Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea dlc like i really enjoyed that Mm -hmm. but just i felt the ending was just kind of lackluster um if you've listened to our uh what was that our our game of the year stuff for 2015 yeah uh, i wasn't a huge fan in the moment Uh of life is strange (laughs) episode five um and and i feel like i feel like uh firewatch is kind of in the same boat um i felt the entire game uh, i was just kind of like riveted uh, mm-hmm. But then when just everything kind of came together, it just kind of like it didn't it didn't fall apart. It, it just like it, it just felt like on a whimper. Yeah, like, I guess just... so. Yeah, it was like the game came together and the game was supposed to be like, wow, that was great, wasn't it? And you're just like, no, mm-hmm. no, not really. Like, I, am I supposed to be moved by this? I think it makes me think about everybody's gone to the rapture a lot. I was thinking again, about that one, I too. Won't... I won't get into details, but both this and Firewatch were games I was very interested in, very curious about, pretty excited to get into. And they were games that throughout most of the story, as you're trying to like piece together what's going on um, for in two very different stories altogether. But as you're going through, for me, it was interesting. And it was like, it wasn't like, I'm really loving this or I'm not liking this. It was very like middle of the road, like, I don't know what to think of this yet. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm sure the game will end up explaining that to me or it'll 
provide more information that I can piece it together myself. Yeah. And both of those games, when I got to the ending, it was definitely this moment of like, all right, here it comes, here it comes, here it... Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's I mean, much it's it. fine, but... Oh, okay. I guess that's it then. Mm-hmm. And in those cases for those games where I wasn't necessarily like super into the story itself leading up to the ending and the ending, I wouldn't say was a bad ending. It was just kind of there. Yeah. It was very middle of the road, like yeah. not super great, not bad either. And so like, I think that is really bad because I think as the days have passed now, since I finished Firewatch, my, the thing that's been left with me has been just like the, uh, kind of like, I don't, I mean, I guess it's okay. Because like when I finished it, I was like, okay, this is, that was cool. But I was a little bummed out about some of the story beats and the ending. And then we talked a little bit that brought me down a little bit more. And then as the days have gone on, um, much like with everybody's gone to the rapture, the more I think about it, the more I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad I played it, but I get no interest in playing it again ever. Yeah. Um, and just when I went through my first playthrough, I I think I might have mentioned it to you or, or mm-hmm. somewhere that just I, I beat it and then I went to bed and I woke up, went to work the next day and I just was like, oh, yeah, that was that game I beat the other day. Like I just yeah. it just wasn't memorable at all to me. Um, and I tried, pl- I played through it again. I played through it again on a second time, um, like doing like just a few different dialogue options and stuff like that. See how much would change. And you're, you're pretty much, it's, there's like a little bit of wiggle room in the center of like how the story shapes, but, mm-hmm. um, you're going to get to point A to point B, um, without, you know, too much, you know, changing, I guess I would say. Uh, right. Which which isn't too much of a like wasn't like a negative thing because I mean there's like a, different games that you know we've played that you know have like the same ending no matter what you chose during the game, uh, but it just it again what I was going it just felt like it was going to lead up to something and there's things mm-hmm. in the game that you you do that you're just like okay this is going to affect something down the road and it just doesn't really do it at all. Yeah, and at the same time, um, I was thinking about Alien Isolation. I wouldn't say that game's a bad ending. It's just like the the ending of that game is fine and I kind of like it, but I don't really think about it. Like when I think about it, Alien Isolation to get to the other kind of part of this question I've posed is I think about everything up to the ending. I think about the entire game other than the ending because the entire game is so great. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not necessarily something that I think about a lot just because the ending ultimately didn't matter in that game. It was so much more about everything up to that point that I loved. And so I think even if the ending of that game would have been bad, maybe that would have left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Mouth, But overall, I still would look back on that game very fondly. Yeah. Um, I think the, the Evil Within is another really good example of a game with an ending that I'm not crazy about. And a lot of people aren't crazy about the ending of that game from what I've read before. Mm-hmm. But that game is amazing. And I love it for all of the craziness that happens in the game and not so much what happens at the end. Yeah. So, um, I guess for me personally, I wouldn't say that a bad ending ruins a game, but it can definitely color a game, especially if I'm not enjoying it that much, mm-hmm. you know, up to that point. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, endings are weird and they can be really hard to nail down. Yeah. Yeah. And but when but when you get a good ending, man, it feels good. You betcha. The Last of Us. What a great ending. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You agree? Okay. <laughs> no? Okay. 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 What's one of your favorite endings on this putting you on the spot? Oh man. Favorite endings. Um Hmm. Um, I'll try to think of something in a couple secs. All right, well, why, I, I why do you think of it? Um, it's already basically the end of the weekend when people are listening to this. But what did you play this weekend, Colin? What did I play? Um, I played Firewatch. Uh, again? 
Oh, not again, but this week, I guess I should say. Oh, weekend. I mean, oh, weekend. Oh, what am I playing this weekend? Oh, sorry. I thought yeah. you asked, what are you playing this week? Nope. Um, I'm doing that weird thing that I need somebody to stop me. Okay. But I put in this game called Destiny. Put Destiny down. I put Destiny Put in it down. Because. Take because, it out of the console. Because it was like, hey, if you play seven matches in this playlist, you get a guaranteed 320 ghost. And I'm like, yeah. I kind of All right, well, one. I'm still playing Digimon Story. Getting cyber, farther cyber, into that. Cyber, cyber sleuth. sleuth. Sli- cyber Sleuth. And um, I finished Layers of Fear, which you can look for a review of that soon, is all I'll say. Ooh. And that's all I, all, I, all I can say about that at the moment. Yeah. Um. Anyways, check out our gameplay glimpses on YouTube. You can also check out our video reviews there. Um, we do... This podcast, which if you like, let us know. Review us on iTunes or whatever. Like us, comment, subscribe, whatever. Whatever whatever those YouTube kids tell you to do these days. Yeah, something. We are on Patreon, patreon.com slash PSN stores. If you like the show, if you like the videos and reviews we do and feel like you would want to support us, um, you can do so there. That's the best place to do so. Yeah. Um... We recently over we we went over like three thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It's not as it's not like a million or anything, mm-hmm. but it's a pretty that's a pretty cool little milestone. So I think we're looking at doing a video for that, like maybe just giving away a ton of extra codes we have laying around. Nice. So hopefully look for that in the next week or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we've been planning on doing something like that. So you can follow us at PSN Stores on Twitter. I am at PSP Penguin, PS Penguin on Twitter. Yep. Uh, you are at Bossman C Crowder. Two S's, two C's. Yep. Uh, you can send us an email, podcast at psnstores.com. If you have questions, or just leave the questions in the comments, that might be even, even be easier. And uh, that's going to do it for the show. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Uh, I'm still lo- I'm just looking through like my trophy list real quick, trying to be like, oh, what well, game had a great ending? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't, just one that comes to mind just like right now is The Wolf Among Us. Uh, oh. Re- really okay. enjoyed, really enjoyed that ending. Okay. Um. It's just kind of we, like, we, yeah, we we maybe it, shouldn't say too much about yeah, that. Yeah, I won't I won't say too much, but it's uh, I just kind of went, oh, and like that was it. But it was a good O. Un- yeah, it was a good Firewatch, o. which was like a bad O. Yeah, it wasn't O. It was just yeah, oh. it was O. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I'd go with that one. Okay. Pretty good. Well, keeping with the Telltale thing, I thought the season one of Walking Dead had a great ending. Oh yeah. Yeah. A good one. So let us know what your favorite endings or not favorite endings are in video games, and and how do you feel impacts? Uh, how do you feel endings impact your experience, whether it's game, mo- movie, TV show, whichever. Oh, um, uh, Spec Ops: The Line. Oh that's, yeah, that's that's a good one. Sure. Um, so that's gonna do it for us this weekend. Have a good. Well, your weekend's practically over almost. So hopefully, hopefully you had a good one, and then uh, have a good week, and we'll see you next weekend.